The Lord be with you. Welcome to our video for the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. This is Zion Lutheran Church in Pine City, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Kleppe. As we have been doing through the season of Epiphany, we're using Divine Service Setting 1 in our videos. It's on page 151 in the Lutheran Service book. If you have one, you can follow along there. And we'll be singing three hymns. We begin with the hymn. and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. 
And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar, and he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. And he said, Go, and say this to the people. Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull, and their ears heavy, and blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn, and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is a desolate waste. And the Lord removes people far away, and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land. And though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak, whose stump remains even when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul you increased. All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. And they shall sing of the waves of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hand. Our epistle lesson from 1 Corinthians chapter 14. This is what Paul writes. Strive to excel in building up the church. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray also with my mind. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say Amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying? For you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than ten thousand words in a tongue. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking. Be infants in evil, but in your thinking, be mature. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Simons, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down, 
and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled on all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Does anyone really know how to fish? I've known fishermen that read magazines and watch TV shows and buy expensive gear and fish all the time. And even they fail sometimes. Every fisherman, no matter how experienced or how good, fails sometimes. Every fisherman has good days and bad days when they catch a lot of fish or none at all. It seems to me there are three keys to fishing. The first is persistence. If you want to catch fish, you need to go fishing often, regularly, time after time. If you give up easily, you probably won't be a good fisherman. The second is effort. Good fishermen spend hours cleaning and caring for their equipment. They read weather reports and they talk to other fishermen. They want to be good at it and they work at it. The third key is expense. If you want to be consistently good, it helps to buy a nice boat and a good rod and a variety of lures. It's also a good idea to have a depth finder and a quality trolling motor and perhaps a good house for ice fishing and a powerful auger and, and I could go on. But I don't own much of this stuff and I don't know much about it, so I can't think of anything else. I'll just conclude by saying it usually costs money to be a good fisherman. Well, why all this talk about fishing? It's biblical. The Bible talks about fishing a number of times, and Jesus uses fishing as an example or a parable on several occasions. Today, consider, uh, consider today's gospel lesson. Jesus was out fishing with his disciples. Actually, it's hard to say at this point that they were his disciples. He was really in the process of calling them. They were actually fishermen, good fishermen. They were professional. That's what they did for a living. But that night they couldn't catch a thing all night long. Jesus fixed the problem. After teaching the people from the boat, he told them to put out into the deeper water and let down their nets. And Peter disagreed with him. He protested, but Jesus, we were fishing all night and we caught nothing. Certainly Peter's implying that he knows more about fishing than a carpenter from Nazareth. But Peter continued, because you said to, we'll let down the nets one more time. When they let down their nets, of course, you know they were filled to the point of breaking. They filled two boats with the fish that they caught. Problem solved. That's what Jesus does. He fixes problems, and he knows how to fish. Jesus fixes bigger problems than that. Peter right away recognized that he shouldn't be in the same boat as Jesus. He said, depart from me. I'm a sinful man, O Lord. Peter's problem wasn't fishing was his sin. His sin caused him to feel completely inadequate to be in the same boat as Jesus. We all have that problem, the problem of sin. But Jesus can deal with that as well. And he said to Peter, don't be afraid. A few years later, Jesus would take the sins of Peter on himself and take the punishment for Peter's sin. He would die a criminal's death on a cross to win Peter back from sin and give him the gift of forgiveness. God would not hold Peter's sin against him because of Jesus' death on the cross. Problem solved. Then Jesus turned to another problem, one that Peter hadn't even thought about, the problem of unbelief. Jesus told the disciples that they would still be fishing, but they would be fishing for men. They would be fishing for uh, they would be the ones out telling the world about the salvation we have in Jesus. They would be the ones sharing the forgiveness of Jesus with the world. They would be the ones facing the problem of the rejection of Jesus by the world. They would face the hatred, persecution, even death for their faith. The Bible says that the last enemy to be destroyed is death. By dying, Jesus took on the biggest problem of all, and by rising on the third day, he destroyed death. Peter and the other disciples could face everything, even death. 
knowing that they had eternal life in heaven. The gospel of Jesus Christ, which they proclaimed, saved them as well as their hearers, and it saves us as well. And now Jesus has turned the fishing over to us. We still face problems today. Fortunately for us, we don't live in the Roman Empire. We live in the United States of America, and we will not be put to death for our Christian faith. I'm about 99% sure of that. But today, more than ever, people still reject the gospel and turn away from the work of the church. The difficulties that we face today because of this rejection include a struggle to actually do the work of the church and the problem of the financial challenges that we in the church face. We face challenges like COVID. We are in the people business. Jesus said that we would be catching men. A pandemic makes that quite a bit harder. We face challenges like standing for truth in a world that loves lies, like being marginalized and pushed to the edge of society, like we don't matter anymore, like living in a world that has so many distractions that it's hard to be heard by the world around us. As the church today, we don't face martyrdom. We face the struggle of finding people to do the work that is clearly in front of us and needs to be done. We face the struggle of continuing the work of the church, even though neighbors, friends, and relatives turn away from us and reject the message that we are called to bring. We face the challenge of trying to maintain old buildings. Here at Zion, we have two, a house and a church, and they're old, and they need repairs. We face the challenge of paying for increasingly expensive health costs to support the ministry, both here and around the world, in an economy that demands and tempts that we spend our money elsewhere. The work of the church is hard. It always has been, and it still is today. It's hard enough that we have to give ourselves fully to the work. There are constantly things in the church that require your time and your talents. There are things that need money. It's time in the church to consider the cost and step forward to do what we as the church need to do. We are still called to spread the word and to love his people. Like fishing, fishing for men takes persistence. Generally, that means time. The work of the church never stops. It doesn't take summers off. It's 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The Bible tells us to be ready in season and out of season. God asks you to use all of your time to his glory. Be persistent. And like fishing, fishing for men takes effort. God requires you to apply all of your talent on his behalf. God has given his people gifts and talents, all of us. He gave them to us so we can take care of ourselves and others. Use those gifts. Give an effort. And like fishing, ministry is expensive. Here at Zion, our budget is pretty basic. There are no bells and whistles, and still it requires a little more than $3,000 a week to keep this church working and performing ministry in our preschool downstairs and through these videos and to all the people that come through our doors and meet with us here. If we were to receive more than that, we can do more for the gospel. Use your treasure to cover the expense of fishing for men. The fact is, God has blessed us greatly. He's blessed us because he loves us and he wants us to have joy-filled lives. He's blessed us so that we can be a blessing to others. Use your time, your talent, your treasure to serve God and your neighbor. Be the fisherman that God has called you to be. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their need. O Lord God of hosts, build up your church and manifest your spirit among us with wisdom and knowledge. Let our words be measured and intelligible to our fellow Christians and to those outside your church that we may utter our amen in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain those called to be fishers of men in Christ's church, that they would not be discouraged when they toil all night and take nothing, but continue to let down their nets at his word, according to that calling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may be mature in our thinking and infants in evil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all Christian homes, that your word would be sown and produce much fruit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us faith to let down the nets of your word in our daily vocations, and trust your Son to do his gracious work through poor sinners like us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, be not far from us. As you have worked deeds of salvation in Christ Jesus, so make haste to help us now in every trouble. Give healing to the sick, strength to the weak, and comfort to the afflicted. We name them now. Do not forsake us nor the generations to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send from your altar, O Lord, the body and blood of Christ. Cleanse us and our lips by the sacrament. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, never depart from us. Though we are unworthy of you and your bounty, we are pleased to receive our meager thanks and reluctant obedience for the sake of Christ's perfect obedience. Let your word rule us and your spirit revive us to leave behind pride and anxiety alike that we may follow you in all we do. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Once again, thank you for joining us. This is Zion Lutheran Church in Pine City, Minnesota. Our address is 410 Main Street South, Pine City, 55063. We have a website at uh, zionpinecity.org and an email address of zionpinecity at gmail.com. Our phone number is 320-629-3683. I encourage you to contact us if you have any questions or concerns about our ministry here. We have worship at 9 o'clock Sunday morning and it's followed uh, by a time of education uh, which usually goes until about 11.30 on Sunday mornings. May the Lord bless your week. Thank you.